Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So what's obvious to me is that uh, many of us uh, are still wanting to learn more about the problem reality. Uh, you know, hey, Chris, well, what about if I have, I, I break my arm? I mean, I got to fix that, true? Or if I have an illness, you know, I, I do want to fix that illness. So, so how do I, so what do you mean I'm not allowed to think it would be better when? Because, because honestly, it will be better when my arm is fixed, right? Like, let's say someone breaks their arm, hey, eh? we all must admit their life will be significantly better if that arm was not broken. True. So they say, no, I, there's actually something broken and my life will be better when it, when it is, you know, but we, we would all have to agree with that. Wouldn't we would have to say, uh, um, that's nearly the right email. Um, Reba. it's actually support at conscious education company.com. But thank you. Uh, would someone, would someone please make sure we type in the correct one? So thanks Esther. Yeah. It's, it's conscious education company. Um, thanks, Kim. Thanks. Just want to make sure you, you know, you, you, you get, get the right email. Um, you can send this assist, assist one as well, Lisa, either, either is fine. What was I talking about? Okay. So, 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 so the, the, here's the thing is the idea that you deny yourself living in the moment that's, that's the key, is that you've given yourself an excuse to not live in the moment. Absolutely, your arm's going to heal. Absolutely, hey? Absolutely, you give your body the right instructions, it's going to, it's, it's going to create the body that's in alignment with who you are. But what's interesting to me is, is people aren't living longer. They're dying longer. They, they stop living at about age 11 or 12. And, uh, and they, they really, they, ju they just die for longer because they're so focused on, on not being sick or not, not having enough money. They're not actually living. They're so worried about losing something that they're not even using. And so, so they get a broken arm or they get a diagnosis and that just becomes another excuse about why they're not living. Does this make sense? They're not living. They say it's because, and so what are some of the excuses we give about why we're not living? I'm not living because my legs don't work well. I'm not living because uh, I just need to have better skin. I'm not living because I've got too much weight on my body. I'm not living because I'm single. I'm not living because I've got, you know, I'm a single parent with, I'm not living because, you see that? I'm not living because I don't have enough money. I'm not living because, you see that? And what they do is, is every time that they say, I'm not living because that they, they, they misappropriate the power to that thing. And it feels good. It feels good because when there is something that is not you, that's stopping you, then it's not you. You see? And the ego goes, yeah, it's not me. I'm not to blame. And it can, and it can push it away. True, it pushes it away. So it feels better to say, oh, it's that, it's that. And so they just, they, they say, and so then they focus their, their whole life on, on trying to, to, to remove, overcome, or fix that thing that they believe is stopping them having a life they love. Does that make sense? They, they say, this is the problem. This is my, this is it. And so their whole life becomes about that. And you meet people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and yeah, I've had this lifelong problem with health. Okay, great. So, um, so how's life? Oh, well, I can't really do anything because of this. And how long has that been? Oh, it's been like that for 30 years. Well, when are you going to use the health you've actually got? When are you actually going to use the time you've actually got? Instead of, you know, so that just does everyone get this? They're not living. They're so scared of losing something they're not even using. They're not living. And by, by living, I mean in their heart, in their heart, going for their truest expression, their truth, 
They're too busy saying, when I have the money, when I have this, or, or I don't want to do that because I might be rejected, or they're too busy doing other things. And so the, the key is, is that it's inevitable what will happen. If they, if, if one, if someone uh, focuses on the reasons why they can't live true and happy now, what's inevitable is they've given the power to that thing. And then what's inevitable is that, that that will get the power and that will never, ever, ever leave. That's what I mean when I say uh, you can't be problem solving. You must be it now. You must live full now. And yes, you're living full and you would like uh, your arm to be healed in my example. Does that mean you would still prefer that, wouldn't you? But, but that's not stopping you having a great day. See, see, one thing we can truly acknowledge is we all have the power to create the, the life we choose. And as we're doing that, there is going to be some tough days because we live in a co-created experience, don't we? We, we, you know, we, we simply don't want it to be you know, this uh, completely rigid, completely controlled, ordered situation. We enjoy, uh, you know, that there's things that we need to overcome and, and achieve and be. So if you, if you want it to be completely, you know, control, that's, that's not a reality you want. It's like that Pleasantville movie, you know, where, where everything's just, just so pleasant, but no one's happy because there's, there's nothing about it. And, and so, so that's what's inevitable. The power of the inevitable. Here's what's inevitable. If you put the power in you, if you start living true to your heart now, if you start creating a life you love now in spite of anything that is going on, in spite of it all, in spite of, uh, in spite of it all, you choose, you make the conscious decision right now that you are going to live over those core four. And you, you say, I'm going to love my life. And you do that. And, and some days are harder or, or than others to, to keep to that. I promise you what's inevitable is that you end up with the life you love. And isn't that the biggest success of all? Isn't it? What could be a higher success than a life you love? So, think about that for a second. I mean, maybe you could say helping others have a life they love, but simply wouldn't that create your life you love? Like, what, What's a higher ideal? What, what's more meaning? You know, well, obviously there'd be a lot of meaning in a life you love, create, create meaning. And, and meaning is an interesting thing. It's, it's, it, is, it is hard to, to, to discover, uh, you know, a meaning, but, but, it's, but it's part of it. If, if we truly sit in that, what is inevitable? You truly go, I'm going to love my day today in spite. Because guess what? You might, you might create a super successful business. You still have to do your tax. You still have, you, you know, you, you create a super successful business. Everything's going great. You rely on people. They quit. Right? You, you, you know, you, you still, doesn't matter how much uh, you you do your body is your body is slowly um, using itself up. You are going to have health challenges that you have to overcome. True, we all know death is inevitable too, right? So those things are going to have to happen. It, it's inevitable a loved one's going to get injured, or and and it's inevitable someone you love will die. That that's all part of it, isn't it? Isn't it? Like we, we can't say, oh, it's okay. It's an, it's inevitable that you'll bump into other people's creations that might look like destruction to you. That that's all part of it. But, but if you want to create that top thing, it's simply a choice. And it's not a choice that means that you get to avoid the somehow um, normal stuff, life, you know. It's just inevitable that if, if, if you give the power to the reason, to the condition that must be completed, that condition will always own you or the absence of that condition will always own you. Until you, in spite of your health diagnosis, choose to be happy and fulfilled and loving life now, in spite of it, until you do that, that thing will always have the power over you. But as soon as you choose it, you're happy anyway. Magic happens. 
It no longer has the power over you. And then what's magic is, is as I've seen, is the more that you give your body life affirming, um, lower stress signals, uh, happy, then the magic happens. The more you stay in stress of this thing that's in the way, the more you give the opposite signals to your body and creates more stress. So it's, it's quite funny, this, this, this power of where you're focused, the power of where you're focused. Are you focused on how you have it all or are you focused that there's something you must you must have in order to have it? And, and many of us in this crazy world that we're in right now, what, what are we focused on? How we don't have enough money to truly to truly have a life we love? It's it's complete rubbish. It really is. Uh, you know, we know that, and we know it. We look at people who are famous and have heaps of money and things, and, and we know they're not any more significantly happy than us. We all do know that, right? And we, and we look, we know in our in our truth that it's not there. So so we are we are preoccupied with this thing that must be solved in order to have the life we love, rather than sitting and having a life we love. Is it true? As a as a as a group, if you put a ring around uh, our our culture, that is our preoccupation. So I drew this up because uh, I want to talk about good and bad. So when we live down here in the self-conscious, uh, we live in the world of good and bad, that there's things that are good and there's, there's things that are bad, okay? And uh, so, so what are some things that we think are, are good? Uh, we say, you know, having lots of money is good. Being, being healthy is good. Um, being loved by others is good. Uh, having friends is good. Laughing, enjoying, enjoying my day, that is good. And so then what do we say is bad? Well, you know, the opposite of that, you know, being lonely, no one loving us, uh, being broke, uh, being ill health, uh, being sad. You see, and, and, we, and, we, and we, make, we make this up. We make this up. See, uh, when we become self-conscious, we make up this idea of what is good and what is bad. And I want you just to think about this for, for just for a second. Well, actually for, for a couple of minutes to be precise. Uh, what was good, what is good and what is bad to you? Really, like, uh, you know, maybe look at your childhood or look at where you are now. What, what is good, what is bad? What, what signifies being good and what, what is not good? I think it's a very, a very important thing to consider. What, what is good? Doing right by others, yeah? being polite, being honest. This is good. So, so lying, being disrespectful, that's bad. Yeah, I'd say that's right. Uh, being successful without hurting others, that is good. Being successful hurting others, bad. And, and you know, we, we can, you know, uh, good giving to others, bad taking. So, so we start to we start to see this, hey, you know what is what is good, uh, and, and what is what is bad. Someone says the sun is always good. Not for me. <laughs> About five minutes of sun, and I'm I've uh, I had a, it's quite funny. I, I went and had a naturopath um, do all my blood work last week. I have three times the level of vitamin D than the 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 average person, and she's like you're not taking a vitamin D supplement. I'm like, no, I've just got very fair skin and I play tennis every day in the sun. <laughs> I have three times. She's like, yeah, that's a lot. I'm like, yeah, I know. She's like, that's really good though. <laughs> um, so, so we have this idea of what is good and what is bad, you see. And so someone there just said, well, the sun is always good. But, but that's a self-conscious going going that's that that's how good is and that's how bad is now what what's interesting is when you move to the super conscious when you become it there is no good and no bad it's the fulcrum okay so down here's the pendulum swing and and uh, everything's at a different level of goodness or badness think think about that goodness goodness and badness is is the same thing it's just different degrees of it when does something go from bad to good and can it ever be one or the other it always depends on the perspective as well, doesn't it? But it's like hot and cold. When does it turn from hot and cold? Well, like what moment? If you'd ask my wife, uh, like hot, 
Uh, so her cold is my steaming hot. She has a shower. She leaves it on. She goes, you can jump in. I jump in the shower. I'm like, how does your skin even handle that heat? It's like melt my melting me a bit. So her her cold is my boiling. <laughs> so it's, it's a perspective, isn't it? it, it is this is when 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 is rich? If we put you know rich and poor, when when does that happen? It also depends where in the world you live. You know, you, you live in Sydney, Australia, with some of the the most uh, insane house prices. You need a lot more uh, to to be to be rich than. Then even if you live here on the Gold Coast or you live in New Zealand or you live in other parts of the world, you need a lot more, you know, a lot more. So, so it depends, doesn't it? It, it, it depends. And so our self-conscious has made up this idea of, of good and bad and it lives in this world. And, and, and what's interesting about that is we create so much chaos when we're trying to hit, when we live here. There's certain things that uh, certain conditions and circumstances that you're not allowed to have. They are bad. They are wrong. Like you, you just not. You've decided you can't have that. That that's not allowed. And here's the key: if there's anything you couldn't experience, that that actually owns you. I remember talking with Scott Weddle, my business partner in our marketing company. This was years ago, and uh, I was coaching him, and he was an entrepreneur, and he still is an entrepreneur, and uh, I noticed he had this humongous idea that having a job was bad. That was, it was, it was uh, and I said to him, go get a job. You need to go get a job. And bear in mind, he paid me at that point, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to be his business coach. And there I am saying, what you need to do is go get a job. And he's and, and I was showing him just how much resistance he had to this. And he, he had so much resistance to get a job. I said, what's so wrong with having a job? And he told me, well, you're trapped and you can't get anywhere. I said, well, what, but, but, but there's great jobs out there. Why is being an entrepreneur so different to that? And it really was an interesting coaching point because because there's not that much difference. I mean, you still have to show up to work. You still, the only difference is if you're an entrepreneur, you're your own boss, which is sometimes more stressful than, than having a job. Like there's no, you're still going to get paid. Entrepreneur doesn't guarantee you're going to get paid. There's, there's, there's downsides of it, you know? And there's, so, so it's really interesting when you start to ask yourself, why is that so bad? Why have I decided that that is bad? Because whatever you've decided is good and bad owns you. Many people uh, that, that I talk to, Ill, illness is bad. Illness is bad. And it's bad. I can't be sick. They're constantly sick. I can't be sick, though. You've got to fix the sickness. They say to me, I can't live unless I'm not sick. It's, it's rubbish, isn't it? You, got, you, you know, I can't have what I want unless I'm not sick. It, it's, it's rubbish. See, the, from the superconscious perspective, even illness isn't bad. Even illness isn't bad because from from a superconscious perspective, when you're it, it places a higher priority on using the body vessel you've been given than holding on to a body vessel. And I want to use the word body vessel so, so we realize that the body is holding our consciousness. The superconscious has a higher priority that you're using the body vessel to live your fullest expression than you try to keep something. See, it knows that there's a, a limited, uh, there's a limited time that this, this uh, combination of flesh and bones and hydrogen atoms and, and you know, carbon atoms, there's a limited time uh, that that it will it will be it will be here. It, it knows that for sure, and so it places a higher priority on you you using it. And it, and it says, well, if you're not going to be used, if you're not happy, if you're not using it, we're just going to match what how you feel. We're just going to match it. And so so that's that's very interesting. The superconscious. Isn't that concerned? They go, oh, you want to have a, an amazing body? Cool. Here it is. And, and what I mean by that is that your body is so great at adapting to what it is that it needs to be doing. 
So if you feed it stress and scared and stress and scared and stress and scared, it's too busy trying to focus on what it's stressed and scared about to heal. But what if <laughs> you're stressed and scared about the thing you want to heal? When you go into a stress situation, when you go into, I can't have that, your, your body is so busy dealing with this threat. You see, it actually has a threat. We're going to go for a war on certain diagnosis and we're going to go to war on it. Oh, well, that's stress. It, when you go into a war on something, you don't have time for healing. You don't have time for recreation, true? You're too busy to go into a war. Well, that's how some people's lives are, are set up. And they go, well, why is my body just keep on, keep on fighting me? Because you're fighting it. You see, and, and what are you doing? You've decided that something's bad. So an example uh, of how quickly the body adjusts to what you want it to do is about in December, I got this amazing spin bike and, uh, you know, it's a spin bike and you have, there's a, um, it's like, it's kind of like Peloton uh, for the, those of you who know what Peloton bike is, there's a big um, screen and you race other people on this bike. Anyway, uh, I, I was able to get a certain number when I started and I was exhausted. Like uh, when I finished, I was like, I had to go for a walk. And like, I was just, I was just done, like done. I was, I melted on the bike. Anyway, uh, over the four months of, of continually, you know, telling my body that this is what I want to do and, and, and be a part of, I'm now like 40%, 40% ahead of my personal best from December. 40, and, I, and in December, you, most of you knew me then too. I was not mucking around. I was doing everything I could. 40% better. That's huge. 40 Only because I was in the end result of getting better. Does that make sense? In the end result. I, I wasn't worried about good or bad. I was just going for it. And that's the same, hey? It's, it's a big deal when you realize how much your body can improve. Uh, so, you know, I don't think we give it enough um, credit. <laughs> you know, at about age 11 or 12, it, it completely reorganizes, especially in women. The body goes, right now it's time to reorganize all these sort of things that are going on and become an adult. <laughs> and it starts reorganizing. And by, you know, 14 to 16, it's now basically a completely different organism, <laughs> which is quite wild to think about. So, so anyway, uh, you have this self-conscious version of you and it lives in good and bad. It lives in good and bad. Does that make sense? It, it lives in good and bad. If you live in good and bad, you're always going to live, uh, you know, the pendulum swing. True. You'll always be there. You're always finding something, trying to get somewhere and giving power to two ends. And when you give power to two ends or, or one end of something, all you do is push the swing one way and it pushes back. Okay, so we must drop that. We don't need to fix it. We just need to drop that. You must drop the orientation to this is good and this is bad. And it just must be what it is. When, when you be it, when you rise up, when you rise from the lead, the lower vibration to the gold, from the limited to the infinite, you become it. And when you're it, you simply are a superconductor. You don't mind. You, you know, you can you can still love your life in sickness and health. You can love it in rich and poor. You're just going to choose to love your life. And as soon as you do that, you, you bring all the power back to you. As soon as you as soon as you're not living in this is good and this is bad, and that I already am it, I already have it, I'm already there, and, and I'm already super conscious. You don't see this weird playing field either, where, oh, they're rich, they're better, they're poor, they're bad. No, everyone's super conscious, you see? Everyone, you know, you, you could, you, when, you, when you rise to this level, you look at everyone as, as super conscious creators of their own being, and you just go, wow, we're all it. You see that? And, and there is no... There is no this is better than this is worse or anything. It's just look look what we look what we get to create, and, and that's that's the journey. That's the journey that we're that I'm wanting to take you on and wanting you to to be on. How does that sound? Sound like a sound like a good move. Yeah. think it's a good move. 
So you must catch yourself. You must catch yourself in these ideas of what is good and what is bad. Now you can catch yourself in either way because because if you're deciding that something is better, you 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 know you pick up one end of something, you pick up the other end. So if you're deciding that something is better, then you're deciding that something is worse. If you can't accept something as reality, you're fighting it and you're giving it power. You're not accepting that you're bigger than it. See, whenever you're fighting something, you're not accepting. You're the you're the bigger creator. You see. And when you when you truly accept that, you realize, well, you know, this is my current reality and I'm going to be my fullest expression right now with what I've got. And what happens is the magic happens then. That's when the magic happens. And you, it, it's not for you to work out how. <laughs> Our scientific left brain always wants to try to work out how. Well, how does that happen? How does that happen? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really know how the, you know, how everything works or how the sun was made, you know? <laughs> I don't really know. I guess that there was a big bang, and I guess. <laughs> we don't need to know. That's that's the truth. Because the knowing, the needing to know literally or logically is coming from the wrong, the wrong place. So we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive. Uh, into into what is good and what is bad for you. Sound does this sound good? Does it sound good? Cool. So grab yourself uh, a pen and paper if you like, or a note section on your phone, or if you just want to do it mentally, that's fine too. Uh, or you can use the chat box here. Doesn't 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 matter, but but writing it is definitely definitely the best. So I want to ask, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a, a difficult question, but I think it'll be easy for most of you. Gr growing up in your household, what was good? Define what was good, what was praised, or what was not punished. What's, what's good? Growing up, what was good? What was good? And think about that question. What was good? What was good? Tune back into what was good. What got a lack of pain or gained some pleasure? What got attention? What was good? Really just maybe even close your eyes and go, yeah, what, what was good for dad? What did I have to be? What was good? Well, I couldn't do anything. I didn't know him. I didn't know what, you know, that I don't know maybe or I uh, had to be this way. What's good for dad? What what have, what what did you what did you have to do to avoid any sort of punishment or? And it's okay for you to write. You don't know. Sometimes we get caught in just this search. Well, I don't actually know what was good. I don't know. Ugh, I don't know. I don't know what it was. And then feel into that. What was good? What 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 um what was good? What was good for mum? What was good for her when you were if you were to be good in her eyes how did you have to be yeah it was it was more about what her mum thought yeah right yeah that's it so sometimes uh we we realize well what was to be good to mum was to to lie to the world to pretend it's a it's a funny one isn't it it's like I had to put on a good face no matter what, which actually meant it was better to lie than to admit pain. So what was uh, what was what was good? And then and then for you, what what did you decide was being was being good? What did you decide that was being good? See, some of us don't realize that, oh, to, to actually get attention. Now you can what did I have to do to get attention? If I if I had a problem. I got attention from my dad or my mother. If I had something wrong, yeah, it's always a it's it's always a, an interesting one. So just just think about that for a second. What was what was defined as good for you? 
and also for you, because you and your siblings likely um, didn't have to, uh, didn't all get the same what was good. Okay, so just, so also uh, what was good for, for you, your own choice. Yeah. Great, okay, awesome. All right, good stuff. Okay, so, so the other side of it is, so what was bad? What was punished? What what lost attention? What was bad? Uh, embarrassing them, bad, wasting money, bad. What was bad? What was bad? What was bad? And just tune into it. What was bad for me growing up? Yeah. Yeah, what was bad for me, you know, um, saying you couldn't do something was bad. Uh, I had it drilled into me. It's dumb can, it's not dumb can't. Not allowed to say can't. It's just, it's just, you're not, you're not allowed to say you can't do something. That's bad. <laughs> Bad, bad, bad. What's bad? What's good? So, so what was bad for for mum? Like, uh, you know, uh, what would she consider that you're being bad? What would she ignore you, ridicule, tell you off, avoid? Or, or whoever played played mum, whoever helped form you, hey? Hmm. Existing, yeah. Sometimes it's like I felt like just being there was bad. I was like a pain for her. Yeah, fair enough. What was bad for dad? It was bad. Embarrassing him. Yeah. Bothering him, yeah. Being weak, yeah. Being too strong. Interesting stuff you guys are typing in. Didn't have a dad. Yep. So what was so what was bad? Maybe what did you decide was bad about about him not being there? Yeah, it was bad that I was around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so just you know allow yourself to experience that uh, this is all chosen by you. And. Uh, uh, well, nothing, nothing was bad. You know, the masculine would never tell me off, which is actually interesting, isn't it? When the, the, the masculine that's supposed to create the rules for you isn't there. Well, well nothing's bad. I can do whatever I want. Uh, that's, 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 that's not a good thing either. Yeah, well, people might think that, oh, that's a good thing. No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. Children need adults to tell them what is, what is right and what is wrong. So they learn how to, to be in society. <laughs> you can't leave it up to children to figure it out. But but many parents, you know, they do they do just want their kids to be Peter Pan, <laughs> you know, never grow up. Maybe because it's for them too. But anyway, anyway, we won't talk about that today. <laughs> what is good and what is bad? Okay, so so it, when you when you think about you think about this, okay, you, can you all see how your your focus on good and bad, you know, it it. Uh, it, it does it does shape your world for you doesn't it it doesn't it and and, uh, and so I want to introduce this to you uh, you can be safe or you can be strong hey you can create safe or you can create strong and, and so so many of us go oh you know I wish I had someone else um, keeping me more safe but the, but if you get if you're too safe, then you don't get any strength. You don't have to overcome anything. Does that make sense? If it's too safe, then you don't have anything that, that doesn't need to build any character. And there, that becomes a very unsafe adult. That becomes a very unsafe adult, isn't it? Isn't that true? Is if someone always had someone there keeping them safe, telling them what to do, look after them, you know, protected, safe, you're... And then when their parents are no longer there for them, that they're a very, they're a very weak adult and they become an unsafe, 
uh, unsafe adult. They don't know how to be. And if, if there's if there's something if there's something that's uh, that's against them, that they'll buckle. So they become very unsafe if they don't learn. But but then on the opposite side of that, um, uh, too too much creating someone strong ends up creating someone weak. Because if, if it's too hard and you and the and the child breaks because of the the thing it has to overcome is too much, then as an adult they 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 can't get over it. Does that make sense? So 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 both both don't work. Okay. So you know it, many many people on this call had a horrendous thing come into their uh, their experience and they weren't strong enough for it. And, and therefore, that they they created a, a belief pattern about themselves, hey? and, and then that that belief pattern they're still trying to figure out why well, why did that happen and, and why you know and so they 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 run away they didn't it, it was too much you see, and, but others uh, you know who are protected very very safe you know they get out to the world and they can't do anything it's quite uh, it's quite something um, it's quite something quite something. See, see the what what our self conscious considers bad, um, bad circumstances and conditions has happened to all of us, but none of it has touched, dented, blemished, or even scratched the fact that we're super conscious. And just because uh, most of us grew up around uh, adults living out of their ego constructs has nothing to do with the fact that they're not able to be super conscious and it has nothing to do with the fact that we need to define ourselves based on some rule structures created by two people living an unawoken life <laughs> you know <laughs> true yeah See, we, we can spend a lifetime asking why. Why did dad leave me? Why did mom do this? Why? Why? We, we, we can't, but, but, but when, it's not going to be a, a, a great question. Uh, we don't know. Why did they hurt me? Why was this? Or we can rise to our superconscious and realize that, you know, hey, from a superconscious perspective, um, everything, everything just is. I love it, Dermot. Everything, everything just is. You see? It's very nice, isn't it? Good and bad don't exist in the in the field of the superconscious. You're here to have a human experience, which is to chase uh, good and go away from bad. But if you can rise to the superconscious uh, without this notion of good or bad, accept what is, you become powerful, not the thing you're trying to avoid or run to. As soon as you become powerful, the inevitable will happen. The inevitable. And the inevitable is you'll create a life you love. When, when you rise to the level of the superconscious, you become it. And when you become it, you, you pull the power back. You pull the power back to you. You're not chasing good or trying to avoid bad or defining yourself about what is good or what is bad. You become it. When you become it, the power returns to you. And where you put the power is what will grow. When you and your superconscious are the powerful creator of your reality and you sit in the observer position, you go, oh, that's a very interesting creation. That's interesting. What am I going to create? You, you simply aren't fighting it because it doesn't deserve your energy. Other people's self-conscious egos creating misery or trying to go for good or bad doesn't, doesn't pull you down to the level of self-consciousness. Uh, they can do it and it just bounces off you. You rise up and you create from there. Makes sense. You rise up, and rise up doesn't really define up. It could also, you could also say in. Um, we're just using up and down again because we're talking self-consciously, which are two aspects. It does, it's not even really in or out. It's more of uh, the next level of the fractal, which is neither in nor out. It's, it's uh, around, I guess, or, or, or something that our language doesn't have the ability to <laughs> communicate. 